Welcome to the Daily History Podcast. In this episode, we embark on a mythical journey to ancient Rome, to the very genesis of a civilization that would come to shape much of our own world. Join me as we delve into the legendary beginning of Rome and the tales that set the stage for its destiny. Our story commences with the fabled figures of Romulus and Remus, twin brothers born of divine intervention and royal blood, purportedly sons of the war god Mars and the vestal Rhea Silvia. Fate, it seemed, had its grasp on their destiny from the very moment of their birth in Alba Longa. Exposed on the river Tiber's banks and left to the mercy of the elements, the twins were discovered and nurtured by a she-wolf. It was in this moment of nurturing myth that the future founders of Rome were painted into the annals of time. As the twins grew, so too did their ambition and vision. A city was to be built, Rome, named after Romulus, who became the first of its kings after the tragic outcome of fraternal conflict. Thus begins the epoch of the seven kings of Rome, from Romulus, who founded it in 753 BCE, to the last king, Tarquin the Proud, whose tyrannical rule and the subsequent uprising led to his ousting and heralded the dawn of the Republic. These monarchs, who reigned before the Republic, deeply ingrained the basis of Roman culture and society, setting precedents in religion, governance, and the military, whose influence would stretch far and wide across the empire in centuries to come. Through innovation and conquest, the foundations for Rome's grandeur were laid. Liturgy, traditions, and the earliest forms of Roman law came to be during this period with the establishment of social divisions like the patricians and plebeians that would characterize Roman societal hierarchy. Each king left their mark, be it Numa Pompilius with his religious institutions, Ancus Martius with the expansion of the city's boundaries, or Servius Tullius with his socio-political reforms. Rome's very essence, as a blend of the mythical and the material, the divine and the human, can be traced back to these formative reigns. Together, these tales comprise the bedrock upon which Rome was built, a civilization whose philosophical, legal, and cultural legacies persist to this day, transcending the gulf of time. As we delve deeper into the annals of Roman history, we leave the era of myth and kings and step into the age of the Roman Republic. Our journey takes us to a pivotal moment, around 509 BC, where a radical transformation occurred. The Roman kingdom was overthrown, and the Republic was born. But what prompted this seismic shift in governance, and how did it alter the course of Roman society? Rome's move from monarchy to Republic did not happen overnight. It was a response to the populace's growing unrest with the arbitrary rule of the kings. The last king, Tarquinius Superbus, was expelled after a series of tyrannical acts, igniting the flame for a new order. The fledgling Republic was founded on principles of checks and balances, a novel system where power was shared and the will of the people mattered. At the heart of this system were two consuls, elected annually, who wielded executive powers, but their authority was tempered by the Senate and the assemblies, ensuring no one man could hold tyrannical power over Rome. The social structure of the early Republic reflected a society deeply divided by class, at the top were the patricians, the aristocratic elites who claimed descent from Rome's earliest senators. They enjoyed wealth, status, and exclusive rights to political office. In contrast, the plebeians comprising the majority of the population were the common farmers, artisans, and merchants. Initially, plebeians were excluded from the most significant religious and political institutions. Over time, however, they fought for and won a series of political reforms, including the creation of the Office of Tribune of the Plebs, giving them greater representation and protection under the law. The Roman Constitution, although unwritten, was a majestic framework of laws and customs that guided the Republic. It instilled the concepts of civic duty and virtue, paving the way for the rule of law over the rule of men. Central to the Roman Constitution was the idea that different branches of government would share power and that laws, once ratified by the people's assemblies, would bind all citizens, patrician and plebeian alike. Its influence is undeniable, echoing through the corridors of time,
to inspire future generations in their quest for governance that embodies the values of equity and justice. As the Republic matured, its constitution would be tested by internal strife and external threats, but in its heyday, it represented a beacon of governance that balanced the power of the few with the rights of the many. The echoes of the Roman Republic's political wisdom can be heard in the halls of modern democracies around the world today. Now we delve into Julius Caesar's remarkable ascent, a journey marred by the clamor of warfare, the whispers of conspiracy, and the clash of steel on the Ides of March. Born into a period when the Roman Republic's aged institutions creaked under ambition's weight, Gaius Julius Caesar's early career was marked by a rapid climb through the political ranks and a repertoire of military feats that would forever alter Rome's trajectory. Julius Caesar's grasp for power truly began to tighten during his governorship of Gaul, present-day France and Belgium, where he embarked upon the Gallic Wars, a series of military campaigns from 58 to 50 BCE. With unmatched military genius, Caesar subdued the tribal nations of the vast territory, expanding Roman dominion and filling the Republic's coffers with the spoils of war, while simultaneously bolstering his military credentials and that of his legions immensely loyal to him. Yet, it was upon his return, the crossing of the Rubicon in 49 BCE, that truly marked a point of no return for Caesar and the Republic. Defying the Senate's orders and armed with his battle-hardened legions, Caesar's audacious march on Rome signified the ignition of civil war, a conflict that would stretch across the Roman world from the shores of Spain to the sands of Egypt. The implications of his actions resonated far beyond the battlefield as the Republic's era creaked ominously toward its end. Victory upon victory stacked in Caesar's favor, leading to his appointment as dictator for life in 44 BCE, a shockwave to Roman liberty. The Republic was a shell, his influence unassailable, as he initiated a series of sweeping reforms. He centralized military command under the emperor, launched gigantic building projects, revised the tax system, and even introduced the Julian calendar, setting the measure of time that much of the world still follows today. And yet, the dictatorship that raised him aloft became the pyre upon which the Republic would burn. On the Ides of March, 44 BCE, Fears of tyranny festering amongst a faction of senators erupted into conspiracy and culminated in betrayal. At too brute, Caesar's fall to the daggers of his friends and allies within the Senate's chamber signaled not just the end of a man, but the last breaths of the Republic he had bent to his will. His death threw Rome into tumult once again, paving the way for further civil wars from which an empire would ultimately emerge, with Caesar's heir, Octavian, later known as Augustus, at its helm, an empire where one man's will could shape the known world, for better or for worse. As we delve into the heart of Rome's ascendancy, it is impossible to overlook the pivotal role of Augustus, known also as Octavian, the great nephew and heir of Julius Caesar. Born in 63 BCE, Octavian was thrust into the political limelight following the assassination of Caesar in 44 BCE. What followed was a turbulent period of civil war from which Octavian emerged victorious at the Battle of Actium in 31 BCE, where he defeated Mark Antony and Cleopatra. The victory at Actium granted Octavian uncontested power, and it was then that he established the Roman Empire, taking the title of Augustus in 27 BCE. Astutely realizing the Romans' distaste for kingship, Augustus fashioned his role as princeps, or first among citizens, subtly translating autocracy into a form more palatable for the republic-minded Romans. The Senate granted him proconsular imperium, consolidating his control over Rome's legions, and with this power, Augustus set forth a series of reforms that would ground the foundations of the Pax Romana. The reforms of Augustus covered a broad spectrum, securing his legacy as one of Rome's most influential leaders. He reorganized the army and created a salaried, professional military. His financial reforms stabilized the currency and the establishment of the Aurarium Militare, a military treasury, ensured support for veteran soldiers. Importantly, he instituted a census to facilitate more equitable taxation. 
Culturally, the age of Augustus was marked by significant advancements. He famously claimed to have found Rome built of brick and left it in marble, a testament to the grand building projects he commissioned. The construction of enduring edifices such as the Forum of Augustus, the Era Passus, and the magnificent Mausoleum of Augustus reshaped the Roman cityscape. Augustus's reign significantly bolstered the arts, leading to what is often regarded as the golden age of Latin literature, graced by the pens of Virgil, Horace, and Ovid, whose works encapsulated the splendor and ideals of Augustan Rome. Furthermore, the peace and stability ushered in by Augustus' systematic reforms and prudent governance was the cornerstone of the Pax Romana, a period of relative tranquility that lasted for roughly two centuries. The Roman world flourished under his efficient administration and expansion, stretching the boundaries of the empire, with Roman culture and influence permeating the lives of its vast population. The reach of Rome's legal and administrative systems many of which were codified or improved during Augustus's reign, is echoed in modern governance, leaving an indelible mark on subsequent civilizations. This era was not only one of peace and prosperity, but an epoch that redefined Roman governance and set a precedent for the future emperors to follow. The reign of Augustus represents a transformative chapter in Rome's story, where the Republic's vestiges were molded into an imperial structure that would endure for centuries to come, galvanizing Rome's position as an archetype of civilization in the Western world. As we marvel at the grand tapestry of Rome's history, it is now time to cast our gaze upon some of the most awe-inspiring hallmarks of human achievement. Rome, the Eternal City, was not only a nexus of power, but also a cradle of progress and innovation. Let's delve into the profound contributions that Rome made in the realms of law, engineering, and art, and observe how these ancient advancements have sculpted the face of our modern world. In the domain of law, the Romans were unparalleled, crafting a sophisticated legal system that has echoed through the ages. The Twelve Tables, formulated in the early Republic around 450 BC, laid the foundational framework for Roman law. This precedent for codified statutes paved the way for later legal compilations, like the Corpus Juris Civilis under Emperor Justinian in the 6th century, the underpinnings of civil law in many countries even today. Roman law introduced the very notions of legal rights, the equality of all before the law, and the requirement for evidence in judicial proceedings, cornerstones of our contemporary judicial processes. In the feat of engineering, the Romans were no less visionary. Their ventures were marked by grandeur and utility, from aqueducts like the Aqua Appia, first constructed in 312 BC, to the sprawling network of roads that connected the vast expanse of the empire. The architectural prowess of Romans was majestically demonstrated in the construction of the Colosseum, completed in 80 AD under Emperor Titus, which could hold upwards of 50,000 spectators. The Pantheon, with its unyielding dome, remains the largest unreinforced concrete dome in the world, even now. The Roman penchant for building further manifested in bridges, amphitheaters, and baths, all underpinned by the innovative use of concrete and the arch, bringing functionality and grandeur into concord. Roman artistry, infused with Hellenistic influences, blossomed in a multitude of forms, Statuary, mosaic flooring, and fresco paintings adorned the villas and public spaces, capturing Roman life's vibrancy. Literary works, too, were of paramount significance, with poets like Virgil, who penned the Aeneid, an epic that chronicled the legendary foundation of Rome and highlighted the values of duty, piety, and faithfulness. Ovid's Metamorphoses poetically narrated myths of transformation and served as a repository of mythological lore. These lasting artistic and literary contributions not only enrich their time, but have maintained an enduring presence through the centuries, influencing countless generations of artists, writers, and thinkers. The influence of Roman advancements has inseparably woven itself into the fabric of Western civilization. Our systems of governance still reflect the principles of the Roman Republic, and our legal systems bear the indelible stamp of Roman jurisprudence. The architectural and engineering marvels of Rome 
are mirrored in the monumental structures of today's cityscapes, testaments to human ingenuity. The legacy of Roman culture, with its immortal literature and art, continues to captivate the imagination and serves as a testament to Rome's glory. The empire may have fallen, but its achievements remain, shining beacons of a civilization that once ruled the world and still shapes our own. Truly, as we survey these glorious achievements, we recognize that Rome was not merely a city of marble and might, but an enduring beacon of innovation. In its laws, structures, and scriptures, Rome laid the groundwork for a future it could scarcely have imagined, impressing upon the world a legacy that is not only its own, but has become a foundation for all who followed. As we move forward in our exploration, let us carry with us the indelible mark of Roman greatness, a legacy hewn in history resonating through time. As the light of Rome's eminence waned, the burden of political decay and economic failure became too heavy for the once mighty empire to bear. In the midst of grandeur, corruption eroded the integrity of governance. The Senate, which had been a bastion of Roman policy, faltered, swayed by the ambitions and coin of the few. Emperors and officials indulged in excesses, often squandering Rome's wealth, while tax burdens crushed the common citizens, leading to widespread discontent and civil unrest. The imbalance of prosperity revealed itself in the very sinews of society, with economic instability taking hold in the third century. Debasement of currency to fund the extravagant lifestyles of the elite and military endeavors led to rampant inflation. The crisis of the third century saw Rome's economy at its knees. Commerce contracted, and with the debasement of currency, hyperinflation set in. Trade routes became unsafe due to escalating threats, both internal and external, further strangling the once vibrant trade. Turning to the military, the Rome of old, whose legions were a well-oiled machine of discipline and might, now grappled with defeats and dwindling loyalty. By the late empire, Roman military might relied increasingly on barbarian mercenaries. They were called foderati, bound by treaty, yet these alliances were tenuous at best. Whereas Roman soldiers once stood firm for the glory of Rome, these foderati fought for payment and bore little allegiance to the Roman standard. It was a reliance that would come at a cost, as incidents like the Battle of Adrianople in 378 AD depicted, where the Visigoths crushed the Eastern Roman army. The repercussions of these structural weaknesses were profound, from the internal erosion of Rome's foundational institutions to the vulnerability at its borders that had once stood impregnable. Rapid turnover of leadership, with emperors rising and falling with alarming frequency, often met their end through assassination or revolt, leaving a void filled by the next ambitious claimant, and the cycle perpetuated, a cycle that set the stage for Rome's eventual and inevitable decline. As we delve into the details of the fading twilight of the Roman Empire, we come to understand that the end was not precipitated by a single catastrophic event, but rather a series of misfortunes and missteps that unfurled over time. The stage was set for Rome's decline as far back as the third century, a period marked by what historians call the crisis of the third century, where no fewer than 25 emperors reigned in a span of 50 years, each ripped from power by war or assassination. The decline further accelerated in 376 AD with the formidable arrival of the Goths across the Danube, a boundary of the empire that had been considered impenetrable. The Goths, fleeing the Huns, sought refuge within the borders of Rome. Initially, they were permitted entry, an event which foreshadowed the empire's struggle to maintain its grasp over the territories it had once controlled so firmly. The fateful Battle of Adrianople in 378 AD saw the Goths triumph over the Roman legions, a defeat so catastrophic that it cost Emperor Valens his life and signaled the vulnerability of a seemingly invincible empire. Mounting pressures continued as Rome's military power waned and reliance on barbarian mercenaries grew. These Futterati, as they were known, were not bound by allegiance to the empire, and this miscalculation became apparent in 410 AD when, for the first time in 800 years, the city of Rome was sacked by the Visigoths led by Alaric. 
Rome's aura of invincibility had been shattered, exacerbating political instability and economic turmoil within the once mighty empire. The next blow came when the Vandals, another Germanic tribe, captured Carthage in 439 AD and established a kingdom in North Africa. This not only deprived Rome of a crucial source of food, but also allowed the Vandals to control the Mediterranean Sea, severing vital trade routes and weakening Rome's ability to effectively administer its vast territories. In the end, the symbolic finale arrived in the year 476 AD, when the last Roman emperor, Romulus Augustulus, was deposed by the Germanic chieftain Odoacer. This moment, although relatively bloodless and more administrative than dramatic, has traditionally marked the conclusion of the Western Roman Empire and the onset of the Middle Ages in Europe. The Western Empire's disappearance left a profound void in Western Europe. Power fragmented into the hands of regional chieftains and warlords, and the centralized governance Rome had provided became a relic of the past. The Middle Ages saw the emergence of feudalism, a new societal order characterized by localized rule and the elevation of the church as a unifying force post-Rome. The transition was not instantaneous, but over the centuries that followed, the influence of Roman legal frameworks, linguistic legacies, and cultural achievements continued to shape the foundations of European civilization. As the echoes of the empire's grandeur grew faint in the annals of history, Europe reshaped itself amidst the remnants of Rome. The Middle Ages brought about its own unique and enduring forms of governance, culture, and belief systems, yet the bedrock of Rome's legacy persisted, quietly underpinning the unfolding future of the continent. The influence of Rome extends far beyond the ancient cobblestones of the Via Sacra or the towering arches of the Colosseum. It reaches into the very fabric of our modern society, a society that still looks back, consciously or not, to the ancient city on the Tiber for guidance. The Roman Empire, in its scope, longevity, and impact, has left a legacy that continues to shape the world we live in today. Perhaps one of the most enduring legacies of Rome lies in the realm of law. Roman legal principles form the bedrock of many modern legal systems. The idea of written statutes, the right to a fair trial, and the concept of innocent until proven guilty are all descended from Roman codes. The Corpus Juris Civilis, compiled under Emperor Justinian in the 6th century, remains a foundational reference in civil law jurisdictions around the globe. And then there's the lingua franca of the ancient Mediterranean, Latin. Though no longer spoken conversationally, Latin survives in the vocabulary of science, law, and theology. It persists in the root words of the Romance languages, French, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, and Romanian, which are spoken by hundreds of millions of people today. Latin phrases like carpe diem or et cetera are woven into the very essence of our speech. The mark of Roman governance is no less prominent. The concepts of republicanism, the checks and balances within government, and even the idea of senators were all inherited from Rome. The founding fathers of the United States, for example, were deeply influenced by Roman governance models when developing the American system of government, with its executive, legislative, and judicial branches exercising a system of mutual oversight similar to the ancient Roman model. Modern culture, architecture, and thought also owe a debt to Roman innovations. The monumental facades of neoclassical buildings, for instance, the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C., or the Pantheon in Paris, directly echo the architectural principles seen in Roman structures. These grand designs aim to channel the grandeur and authority of Rome's architectural achievements. Everywhere, from the structured debates of philosophical societies to the strategic thinking underpinning military academies, we encounter the shadow of Rome. The pragmatism of Stoic philosophy enjoyed a renaissance of its own in the form of modern Stoicism, proof that Marcus Aurelius's meditations still resonates with the contemporary mind seeking tranquility and purpose amidst chaos. As we consider these echoes of Rome in our modern era, it becomes clear that the empire's legacy is as durable as the surviving ruins that still stand defiant against the passage of time. It's a tangible reminder that while empires rise and fall, 
the ideas and institutions they leave behind can endure for millennia. Such is the case with Rome, a civilization whose voice, though coming from deep in the annals of history, continues to be heard loud and clear in our modern times. Thank you, dear listeners, for tuning into today's episode of the Daily History Podcast. It's been a pleasure to guide you through the fascinating ebbs and flows of the Roman Empire, from its grandiose beginnings to its poignant end. We hope you found the journey as enthralling as we did in narrating it. If you'd like to continue exploring the annals of history with us, please make sure to subscribe to our podcast. Your support is what keeps our historical odyssey alive. We also invite you to join the conversation by commenting with topics you're eager to hear about in future episodes. Share your historical curiosities, and if your suggestion garners the most likes, it might just be the focus of our next deep dive into history's rich tapestry. So, until we meet again, keep the past present in your minds and hearts. Thank you once again for your time and enthusiasm. Keep exploring, dear history enthusiasts, and may the echoes of time continue to resonate within you. Goodbye for now.